Welcome back guys, or if you're new here, this is Automotive Anonymous, and if you can't already tell, I'm currently driving the brand new 2024 Mustang GT. Let's see what it can do. Not bad for a five liter base bone stock Mustang at over a mile above sea level. This thing handles really well. I think Ford has done a good job. I actually just finished doing a full review of this vehicle and I didn't want to give it back yet. And can you tell why? It's a lot of fun, it's a Mustang, so what do you expect? Have you guys driven one of these? Comment below, I'm genuinely curious, and if you have, which one, which generation, which powertrain? I've driven quite a few of the Mustangs. I haven't driven a supercharged one, but I've driven a supercharged Coyote before and an F-150 and even the Raptor R, and I really like Ford engines. I feel like they've come a long way, even though they're huge physically, being, you know, dual overhead valve, train. They're big. They're bigger than GM engines. They're bigger than LS engines. And they make a lot of power. And now for 2024, the Camaro's dying. It's going away this year. The Charger and Challenger are already gone. So this Mustang is literally all that you have left in the pony car realm. And I mean, it's been around since 1965. And I don't think Ford thinks it's going anywhere. But it does a good job at a lot of things. It has Brembo brakes up front and under even light brake pedal. It does a really good job. The 10 speed is a good transmission as far as a factory transmission goes. It's not the fastest shifting like a dual clutch, but it does a pretty good job and it changes directions around corners pretty well. That wasn't quite full throttle and I do wanna mention even when traction control is turned on, and let's see what mode we're in right now if it's still in drag strip mode. Maybe I'll put it into track mode. The exhaust gets just a little bit louder. And look at all the fun graphics. Now, it feels even better, even stiffer than it did before. The steering wheel is 100% numb. You really can't feel a lot through the steering wheel because of all the electronic nannies and controls, but it's very sharp if you notice how quickly the turn in. This would seriously be such a hoot to hoon around on like a track and have a lot of fun with. But out here in the country, there's a lot of trucks, there's a lot of tractors and a lot of farm equipment. And the Mustang is a grand touring car, so it's meant to drive through all of that. With the 255 40 19 wheels that this has, it honestly feels really smooth and composed on the road. I'm gonna do another little bit of a break, kind of a quick turn and get right back onto the gas right here. And you can definitely feel the combination of weight and power in the Mustang GT Premium. This one, by the way, is located at Goody Motor Ford. Really good dealership. I'm gonna link them below if you're interested. They have a lot of cool inventory right now. And I've driven some of their performance stuff and had a lot of fun with it. But overall, you know, it's comfortable in here. The backpack's having a good time. This is the Premium, so it has leather seats, but they're not Recaro's. So they're not gonna hold you in as well, but just trying to slide around right now, I do feel pretty well bolstered, and I think that's a good reality check of if I'm losing control in my seat, I'm probably doing things I shouldn't. And if I'm not on track, so, you know, do the, the couple check marks on your checklist, and if you're sliding around and you're on a public street, you're probably needing to stop. That might be a little bit too extreme because with 480 horse and 415 torque, this thing, it puts the power down really well. It is usable like in the country, getting up to speed on the interstate, but I do think it is just a little bit too much power that you do need to be careful with it. I don't know if you guys caught that on camera, but it is tuned to downshift when you're braking. That is cool. It really does a good job. And the peak horse and torque come on at 4,900 RPM for the torque and over 7,000 for the horsepower. So you do have to rev this out more than you would like an LS or an LT engine by GM. And while I'm in track mode right now, my foot's off the gas and it's holding RPM. But if I go say to, there's sport mode, normal, I'm actually gonna go down to slippery. Slippery is probably the least aggressive mode in Mustang existence because horses don't like the winter. Horses similar to cows wanna be inside when there's winter. So in slippery mode, you notice now that I'm just cruising at 50 miles an hour, about 1200 RPM maybe, and having a good time. 
the display, this new huge, you know, 12 and 13 inch screen, because this one is not connected. There is a gap, you know, in the screen right there, if you guys can tell. It looks really good. I do like it. I do like that you can get the old five liter, uh, the five liter um, Fox body Mustang gauges with some of the displays. I do think that's a really cool thing. Sorry, there's just a little bit of rocks on the road. Um, so it is neat, but they're not the fastest screen. The speaker system and the subwoofer in the back and the trunk do sound really good, but I think you're gonna be using Android Auto Apple CarPlay most of the time because vehicle systems infotainment gets out of date after like two years, and then it just feels slow and laggy. But Android Auto Apple CarPlay, it's constantly updating and they usually seem really good. The speakers otherwise are great. The ventilation and the AC is really good. The heated seats I had on earlier just to test and they did work really well, but I don't like that they're all controlled through the screen. So you have to push a silly little button, try to keep your eyes on the road, and then push some more silly little buttons. You can't just turn a dial or something physical. And I am sad that, you know, of all the things that Ford is stubborn with and deciding to maintain, like driving a big V8 muscle car, they decided to integrate their, you know, their HVAC into the screen, and I'm not happy about that. But overall, I'm quite happy driving this. Let me show you a zero to 60, and in fact, I did a few trials. They were all, actually, every single one was within two tenths of a second, and at about a mile above sea level, that's just what this does on this level of road, but on my private road. So here's that GPS zero to 60. Zero to 60 in the Mustang GT. I have it in drag strip mode brake rev, and I'm actually going to leave traction control turned on because after a few off-camera test runs, it was actually fastest with that combination, not having any wheel spin rather than trying to modulate wheel spin. So let me show you what it can do. Ooh, lots of wheel spin, and true zero to 60 came in at 4.98, so about four hundredths of a second faster. Here's the graphs and my final thoughts. So honestly, a five second flat, basically zero to 60 true time, not textbook, not what the magazines claim. But does it feel fast? Yeah. Does it sound glorious? Yeah. that the Mustang has to offer. Even the back seats when I tried to cram myself back there earlier at 5 foot 11, they felt pretty good, although there is a lot of hard plastics and cost saving in other areas, and there's no leg room. So unless you don't have legs or you're eight years old or older, you're not gonna have a good time. But, you know, the seats were comfortable. You do have 13 cubic feet of trunk capacity. So even though the Mustang in my area is about a second slower than it's rated, it still is getting a lot of things done right. It's comfortable. It's a cruiser. It's a grand touring car. Throw, you know, your favorite person in the car seat next to you. Throw all of your stuff in the back and just have a good time and drive it somewhere new with the 5 liter Coyote engine. Driving a 3,800 pound car should be a pretty easy thing to do. Because remember, this engine is in the full size F-150, a vehicle that can tow over 10,000 pounds. So just cruising around and driving it a little bit spiritedly really should not be any stress, any struggle for the naturally aspirated Coyote engine. And heck, if you want to boost it, Whipple already has their Gen 5 supercharger, which makes this put down over 700 wheel horse, which is absolutely absurd what you can do for, you know, $65,000 these days. This one MSRPs for about 54, and then Goody Motor has it discounted about four grand from what I can tell. I'm sure they could work with you. They are a good dealership, but just, Driving a Mustang, one of the funnest things you guys can do, I highly recommend you go borrow one. Go find a friend. Make friends, talk to someone in a parking lot who has one. I don't know, whatever you have to do though, go find one because these are really cool. And honestly, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I don't know if I'm having much more fun than I did with last the last generation, that's 550. It is nicer on the interior. But if you can find a really good deal on like a, a lightly used or a new carryover 23, consider that, you know, if it's 10 grand cheaper, I'm not sure that this is worth 10 grand more than the last one when the powertrain is identical for the most part. You do have the dual intakes, you know, 20 more peak horse, 
but that's not much more than a powertrain tune. And anyways, guys, I just feel like I'm rambling on right now, but I just wanted to show that this Mustang is really good at handling. And honestly, just now, the little bit higher speed turns, I could feel wheel braking happening, and that's really interesting. I haven't experienced that before on the Mustang. But anyways, guys, if you wanna see a longer review where I tell you more facts and features, then watch that video. It was probably posted a few weeks ago. Otherwise, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me ramble on about this really cool muscle car. Check it out in the link below if you want. Like and comment. I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, take care.